you have to decide for yourself what is it worth to you. And there are some things that you can do to make it super worthwhile for yourself to volunteer. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing world changers in the creative, social impact, and vegan spaces. If you like what you hear on this episode, you're going to want to check out the bonus mini episode that you can access if you DM me at Isolde T on Instagram and you let me know you want it. You'll get access to bonus episodes, new art, my latest writing, and other fun benefits. And now, let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. This is another shorter episode where I'm going to talk about something that I've been thinking about, and today it is the case for volunteering at places where other people might be getting paid. Here's what I mean. Somebody just posted about a con that's taking place in Minneapolis, uh, and the con is asking for volunteers to come and perform or do things at the con while other people are being paid to be there. And here's the thing. It's VCon. I'm going to be upfront about all this. Gary Vaynerchuk's NFT con where he's going to have a lot of speakers and a lot of people uh, who ha- can bring a lot of value to the NFT space, right? C- crypto and NFT. And they're asking for people who live locally to come and volunteer. And so I'm wondering about what do you do if someone is asking you to come and volunteer something that you normally do for money for, you know, for free in order to what, be able to be at the con? How do you do that? How do you make your volunteer time, especially if other people are getting paid, something that's valuable enough for you so that you feel good about volunteering, right? So first of all, Don't ever do anything like that that you don't want to do. If it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, don't do it. Don't volunteer. If you are like, oh, no, 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 this, uh, you know, person X over there is getting paid $700. I don't know, whatever, $700 to go to this thing and be there. And they're asking for other people to come and do this for free. Uh, Amanda. Oh, my goodness. I cannot remember her name. Uh, The only thing that's coming to mind is Amanda Plummer, but that is not her name. (laughs) She she wrote a book. Hang on. Let me find that information. I yes, I found it. Amanda Palmer, who wrote the book called The Art of Asking. And in the book, she talks about how she gets people to volunteer and 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 she does it by asking. Right. She asks for help and people come out and it is it is a whole thing. So. Yeah, there's this notion that you uh, you can volunteer your time to help artists and other people who are doing work to to help them do their thing because you want to support them. It's a little bit different when it's someone who's doing something for profit, right? This is a for profit thing. NFTs are a big deal, or at least they're becoming a big deal and everyone's trying to get on board. And it is a thing where you uh, if you're putting on a con, you can't possibly pay everybody unless you can, but then you want volunteers and you're thinking, I think, that as a volunteer, you know, if if you're a volunteer, you're going to soak up a lot of what's happening and get value out of it, right? So that's the thing is like, oh, we're going to get volunteers because if they're interested in the topic, then they're going to come and they're going to get a lot out of being there, uh, sort of soaking up what people say, meeting new people, etc., the thing for me, when I volunteer those, I end up nowhere near the action sometimes, right? I, I remember volunteering at a festival and the they put me on security on Saturday night, right? When the big headliner was doing their thing, I was on security walking the perimeter of the site. So it's that kind of thing where you take that chance. If you're going to volunteer, you take a chance that, oh, I'm not going to get to be where the action is and... So is it worth it to me? But having said all that, I have made some amazing contacts as a volunteer for conferences and other events. If I'm not doing anything else that day and it's not far for me to go and do, I'll go and do sometimes. It, it really depends on the event, right? If it's something that I'm super interested in and super excited about, I will, I will volunteer sometimes. If I really care about the cause, 
if it's that kind of event. I will volunteer sometimes. And again, you get to meet incredible people. So I get not wanting to volunteer if other people are getting paid. I, I, I get asked to volunteer where, when other people are getting paid all the time. But I also get that if you're really into the topic, you can consider it that you you meet you you will meet incredible people. And if you're really into the topic, it, you might get enough value out of being there, meeting those people, talking with them, making contacts and networking, then it might be worth it, right? If you get a free pass to the whole event and all you have to do is volunteer for a couple of hours, that might be worth it to you. And I remember one time I volunteered as a driver for people going to and from an event and I met a super famous author who I'm still in touch with, right? We're still friends. So it all depends because uh, other times I've been asked to pay my own airfare, hotel and meals while other people have been getting paid to present at an event because, you know, Isolde, we we know that you love the earth so much that we just knew you'd want to volunteer your time and your finances to come to Florida and do this event for us. Oh, no, I don't think so, right? So there there comes a point where you go, okay, you have to decide for yourself what is it worth to you. And there are some things that you can do to make it super worthwhile for yourself to volunteer. One, if you care about the cause and it doesn't, any, nothing else matters, do it, right? For example, I lead the Philosopher's Stones, the Holiday Caroling Group, and we've been asked many times to come to a battered women and children's shelter, House of Ruth, to sing for their holiday party. I don't get paid for this. I don't ask any of my uh, musicians and singers to get paid for this. We do this as a volunteer thing because if you aren't going to go sing carols for people who are at risk like that, well, it's up to you, right? And no, it's not required. But if there's any time for me to volunteer, that's a really great time for me to volunteer, especially as a survivor of child abuse myself. That's huge for me, right? If somebody wants that kind of thing, I will always show up. My other singers, they get to choose if they want to or don't. And no one has ever said no, because it's such a good cause, right? So that's something for you to think about. If you really believe in the cause and you're passionate about it, it might be worth it just to do it because you will be adding to the value of of the people putting on that event for this cause. The other thing is uh, bring your business cards if you go and hand them out to everybody. Network like crazy. Make sure that you get a free pass to the entire event. If you're doing your two hours of volunteering or a day of volunteering and it's a multi-day event, abso freaking lutely make sure that what they're going to do is not just go, oh, you volunteer for two hours, get out. But be sure that you are going to be able to stay for the entire event and network, network, network. Put on your networking hat and meet every single person you can. Ask them about themselves. Be curious. Get to know people. Hand out your business card. All of that stuff. And I've talked in previous episodes about the best way to network. But yeah, being curious and being helpful. And remember from my book, Speak From Within, when in doubt, know your role. In other words, come up with a role for yourself. If you are the person at this event who knows exactly where people need to go to get their drink tickets, then you be that person. If you're the person who knows where the coat check is, you be that person. Whatever it is that you can become an expert in, people are going to be asking, you know, where do I go to check in? Aha, I know exactly where you go to check in. Boom, boom, boom. I have now been helpful to you and we will be able to uh, have a longer conversation, right? The other thing is don't drink. If everybody else is at the bar and they're drinking up a storm, get yourself some water on the rocks. It'll look like vodka and stay sober. Stay sober so that you can, again, stay in the conversation, be ready to meet people and stay in the in on the periphery of the really famous people in the in the niche talking. But then eventually, you know, make a comment or two when it's appropriate and get involved in those conversations. And then the other thing that you can do is make sure that if there's someone you want to hear specifically at this event, if there's a speaker you want to hear, if there's an activity you really want to do, when you volunteer, say, hey, this is what's when I sign up, I go, this is I would like to really be free during this time. Please don't schedule me during this time, Friday from two to four or whatever. Right. So you can do that, too. And you can. Again, collect people's information, ask them if it's okay for you to give them a a buzz or uh, drop them an email or a DM at some point, and then follow up after the event, follow up with everyone you met, 
I, I usually make a little list, a little spreadsheet and, and go, OK, who is this person? What do they do? How do we meet? What is one thing I remember about them that I can remind them about when I have uh, sort of left the, the con or the event and want to reconnect with them? Oh, do you remember how we talked about how we both love Star Wars? Blah, blah, blah. Right. So that's something you can do. And then after the event, you can also go, hey, I found this amazing uh, new review of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. And I know how much you love you and McGregor and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I thought you'd want to see this and you send them something that, that adds them value. And that's another way of doing it. Plus, when you work with people at one of these events, if you volunteer, you will, again, be someone they know for next time. And one of the things that you can do is pet. There is this notion. Let me back up a little bit. There is this notion that once you volunteer, you will always be a volunteer. But I have found that that isn't exactly true. Right. One of the things that I've done at conventions is gone. Hey, I absolutely will. will volunteer this year. Next year, I would love to either have a paid position with this con, basically, after they've seen that you've gotten you've done a great job or. For example, I'm a speaker on innovation and creativity, and if the con has something like that, then I will say, hey, I'd love to do a breakout session, and I have my media kit at the ready. So that once you've volunteered and they know that you're a known quantity, you can then sort of make inroads into the ways that you can be of value with the things that you actually do. As a musician, I've been asked to volunteer, too. And that's a big deal because, yeah, that's something I do for a living. And, and it's uh, but I also speak for a living. But, you know, this is one of those things where like, oh, they want entertainment at the bar during happy hour. Would you do it? You know what? I will. Again, I have my mailing list out. I have my business cards at the ready. And I always let people know, hey, if you're having another event, I'm available I'm, you know, basically I'm <laughs> I'm not free, but I can be available. Right. So so that's the thing to think about is that you can make all of this very, very useful to yourself. Again, provided that it's not asking too much of you. No flying to although some people will. Right. There are some people going to VCon who are going to volunteer, who are paying to even be there and going to volunteer because they know that they're going to get so much value out of this event that it's worth it to them. It wasn't worth it to me. I wasn't going to go and volunteer and spend the money on hotel and, and spend the money on the plane fare and all of that. Rather, I'm going to wait to see what the dissemination is because people are going to be talking about it on the on the discord and various other places, I imagine. And if they don't, that's the chance I'm taking, right? This is the chance I'm taking by not going, by not being in the room where it happens, to quote Hamilton. So these are all things for you to think about that if you want to volunteer, you should only do it if you want to. And you should maximize the amount of value you're going to give to the people you meet and maximize the amount of value you're going to get from having gone to the event. Very important two-part message there. All righty, I hope you've enjoyed the show. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast and Creative Earthlings. Whoop, whoop. I can put the little TM by Creative Earthlings because I have actually filled out all the information and submitted it to make that a registered trademark. Very exciting. And I wish for you an amazing, amazing day and to remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <laughs>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.